This is a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in the nation's capital, and we are awaiting President Biden, who will make his first remarks since the monumental decision this morning from the Supreme Court that overturned Roe versus Wade, eliminating the constitutional right to abortion. Here's the president. It's not hyperbole to suggest a very solemn moment. Today, the Supreme Court of the United States expressly took away a constitutional right from the American people that it had already recognized. They didn't limit it. They simply took it away. That's never been done to a right so important to so many Americans. But they did it. It's a sad day for the court and for the country. Fifty years ago, Roe v. Wade was decided and has been the law of the land since then. This landmark case protected woman's right to choose, her right to make intensely personal decisions with her doctor, free from the, inter from the interference of politics. It reaffirmed basic principles of equality, that women have the power to control their own destiny, and it reinforced a fundamental right of privacy, a right of each of us to choose how to live our lives. Now, with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. As chairman and ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, as vice president and now as president of the United States, I've studied this case carefully. I've overseen more Supreme Court confirmations than anyone today, where this case was always discussed. I believe Roe v. Wade was the correct decision as a matter of constitutional law and application of the fundamental right to privacy and liberty in matters of family and personal autonomy. It was a decision on a complex matter that drew a careful balance between a woman's right to choose earlier in her pregnancy and the state's ability to regulate later in her pregnancy. A decision with broad national consensus that most Americans of faith and backgrounds found acceptable that have been the law of the land for most of the lifetime of Americans today. And it was a constitutional principle upheld by justices appointed by Democrat and Republican presidents alike. Roe v. Wade was a 7-2 decision written by a justice appointed by a Republican president, Richard Nixon. In the five decades that followed Roe v. Wade, justices appointed by Republican presidents from Eisenhower Nixon and Reagan, George W. Bush, were among the justices who voted to uphold the principles set forth in Roe v. Wade. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump, who were the core of today's decision to upend the scales of justice and eliminate a fundamental right for women in this country. Make no mistake. This decision is a culmination of a deliberate effort over decades to upset the balance of our law. It's a realization of an extreme ideology and a tragic error by the Supreme Court, in my view. The Court has done what it has never done before, expressly take away a constitutional right that is so fundamental to so many Americans that it had already been recognized. The Court's decision to do so will have real and immediate consequences. State laws banning abortion are automatically taking effect today, jeopardizing the health of millions of women, some without exceptions. So extreme that women could be punished for protecting their health. So extreme that women and girls were forced to bear their rapist child. With the child, a consequence. It's a, it just it just stuns me. So extreme that doctors will be criminalized for fulfilling their duty to care. Imagine having a young woman have to ch carry the child of incest as a consequence of incest. No option. Too often the case. The poor women are going to be hit the hardest. It's cruel. In fact, the court laid out state laws criminalizing abortion 
that go back to the 1800s <laughs> as rationale. The court literally taking America back 150 years. This is a sad day for the country, in my view. But it doesn't mean the fight's over. Let me be very clear and unambiguous. The only way we can secure a woman's right to choose in the balance that existed is for Congress to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade as federal law. No executive action from the President can do that. And if Congress, as it appears, lacks the vote to votes to do that now, voters need to make their voices heard. This fall, we must elect more senators and representatives who will codify a woman's right to choose into federal law once again. Elect more state leaders to protect this right at the local level. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. We need to elect officials who will do that. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. Personal freedoms are on the ballot. The right to privacy, liberty, equality, they're all on the ballot. Until then, I will do all of my power to protect a woman's right in states where they will face the consequences of today's decision. While well, the court's decision cast a dark shadow over a large swath of the land, many states in this country still recognize a woman's right to choose. So, if a woman lives in a state that restricts abortion, the Supreme Court's decision does not prevent her from traveling from her home state to the state that allows it. It does not prevent a doctor in that state, in that state, from treating her. As the Attorney General has made clear, women must re remain free to travel safely to another state to seek care they need. And my administration will defend that bedrock right. If any state or local official, high or low, tries to interfere with a woman's ex exercise in her basic right to travel, I will do everything in my power to fight that deeply un-American attack. My administration will also protect a woman's access to medications that are approved by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, like contraception, which is essential for preventative health care, mifeprestone, which the FDA approved 20 years ago to safely end early pregnancies and is commonly used to treat miscarriages. Some states are saying that they'll try to ban or severely restrict access to these medications. But extremist governors and state legislators are looking to block the mail or search a person's medicine cabinet or control a woman's actions by tracking data on her apps she uses are wrong and extreme and out of touch with the majority of Americans. The American Medical Association the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists wrote to me and Vice President Harris stressing that these laws are not based on — are not based on evidence and asking us to act to protect access to care. They say, by limiting access to these medicines, maternal mortality will climb in America. That's what they say. Today, I'm directing the Department of Health and Human Services to take steps to ensure these critical medications are available to the fullest extent possible. And the politicians cannot interfere in the decisions that should be made between a woman and her doctor. And my administration will remain vigilant as the implications of this decision play out. I've warned about how this decision risks the broader right to privacy for everyone. That's because Roe recognized the fundamental right to privacy that has served as a basis for so many more rights that have come to take — we've come to take for granted, that are ingrained in the fabric of this country. The right to make the best decisions for your health. The right to use birth control, a married couple in the privacy of their bedroom, for God's sake. The right to marry the person you love. Justice Thomas said as much today. He explicitly called to reconsider the right of marriage equality, the right of couples to make their choices on contraception. 
This is the extreme and dangerous path the court is now taking us on. Let me close with two points. First, I call on everyone, no matter how deeply they care about this decision, to keep all protests peaceful. Peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. No intimidation. Violence is never acceptable. Threats and intimidation are not speech. We must stand against violence in any form, regardless of your rationale. Second, I know so many of us are frustrated and disillusioned that the court has taken something away that's so fundamental. I know so many women are now going to face incredibly difficult situations. I hear you. I support you. I stand with you. The consequences and the consensus of the American people, core principles of equality, liberty, dignity, and the stability of the rule of law demand that Roe should not have been overturned. With this decision, the conservative majority of the Supreme Court shows how extreme it is, how far removed they are from the majority of this country. They made the United States an outlier among developed nations in the world. But this decision must not be the final word. My administration will use all of its appropriate lawful powers. But Congress must act. And with your vote, you can act. You can have the final word. This is not over. Thank you very much. Uh, more to say this in weeks to come. Thank Mr. you. Mr. President, do you still have confidence? Well, there you have the President of the United States calling this a sad day for the court and the country, pledging to do everything in his power uh, to protect women's health. He said now, with Roe gone, let's be clear, the health and life of women are now at risk. Let's bring in our chief White House correspondent, Nancy Cordes. And Nancy, what actions can the president take? Well, we only heard him give one actual specific in that speech, Nora. He said that he's going to be directing the Department of Health and Human Services to ensure that abortion pills are more widely available, particularly to women who live in states where abortion is now illegal. What he did not say is whether he is going to push the FDA to drop restrictions that currently limit the number of pharmacies that can provide those abortion pills. Uh, he didn't announce any new executive orders. Doesn't mean that those won't happen in the days to come, but he didn't lay out any specific plan right now to do things like issue travel vouchers to women so that if they need to go a thousand miles to get an abortion, uh, it can be a little cheaper for them. He didn't talk about um, giving service members time off if they live in a state that doesn't uh, allow abortions and they need to travel. So there are going to be a lot of questions on, on the minds of, of abortion rights activists about just how far he is willing to go personally. He says he's going to do everything that he can. He called this ruling an extreme ideology and a tragic error, but we're still waiting for some of those details to be filled in, Nora. And Nancy, the, the president also making the case uh, that this decision is not the final word. He right. said that Congress should act, they could act, but he also said, with your vote, you can act, and laying out the case that this will be a central issue in the upcoming midterm elections. Right, very explicitly laying out a midterm election message saying that the only way to secure women's rights is for Congress to make the right to an abortion a federal law. And he said, we don't have the votes to do that right now. Democrats don't. And so if people care about that, they need to vote in November and elect pro-abortion rights candidates at every level, at the state level and at the, the national level. And that is an argument that you're already hearing today, Nora, not just from the president of the United States, from, from the Speaker of the House and virtually every Democrat that has spoken so far. Nancy Cordes at the White House, thank you. Also want to bring in Jan Crawford because you heard him message 
uh, mention Justice Thomas, Clarence Thomas's singular dissent in which he said that he wanted to reconsider marriage equality and contraception, playing out what the furthest right or conservative opinion on the court was saying this should go further. Right, and Justice Thomas has always been the most conservative justice on the Supreme Court. He is the one who is willing to completely disregard precedent on a number of cases where other conservative justices are not. And if you look at the majority opinion, which has five justices supporting uh, their view, Thomas was the only one who thinks that. The, the other four, he doesn't have the votes. The other four say, no, it does not. We could not be more clear. These other issues are not implicated. The right to contraception, the right to same-sex marriage, those are not implicated because abortion is different. It involves a fetal life. And so there is an, actually an extensive analysis kind of bulked up from that initial draft that we saw where the majority is saying, no, we don't agree with that. And Thomas writes separately, but he's only writing for himself. Jen Crawford, thank you. Also want to bring in our chief Washington correspondent, Major Garrett, who was there at the Supreme Court, which is a fortress with security, but also a number of protests. Major? So, Nora, I've talked to protesters on both sides of this issue this morning since the ruling, the landmark ruling was released, and they both use the same phrase. This is an earthquake. And if so, this judicial earthquake has created a fault line right here on First Street in front of the Supreme Court, where those interested in this opinion have come in much larger numbers since it was handed down at 1010 Eastern Time this morning. I would say the crowd is at least three or four times larger than it was then. Some of those are curiosity seekers, but some are deeply emotionally involved in this issue. I see tears on both sides. Those who have long opposed abortion rights, tears of joy, tears of gratitude. Those who support abortion rights, bitter tears of anguish and anger about what the Supreme Court has done. One of the embedded ironies in this large and ever-growing assemblage of Americans coming this moment in front of the Supreme Court, if you read the opinion today, the Supreme Court said, don't come here anymore. The Supreme Court has nothing more to say on abortion because the Supreme Court no longer recognizes it as a constitutional right worthy of commentary. Go back to your states. Go back to your local community. Well, they're not doing it here, nor they're coming in ever larger numbers. Excellent point, uh, Major Garrett, who is there outside the Supreme Court for us today. The president also calling for peaceful protests after the Supreme Court has struck down Roe versus Wade. The president saying no intimidation, violence is never acceptable. Our coverage will continue on CBS News streaming, your local news, and we'll have a full wrap up tonight on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in Washington.